Today we're in section 4.4. Uh, we're really building the foundation for solving inequalities, learning some of the language, um, and the processes of what it means to be reading or looking at an inequality. So the first thing you need to know are your symbols, okay? We have a less than symbol, all right? Less than would be closed off. I just want you to write a little variable up here in that top section. Okay, because it's important that I read my variable first. So when it's closed off towards the variable, that means less than. When it's opened up towards the variable, that means greater than. Okay, and what do you notice that's different about the third and the fourth columns and their symbols? Hadley? Yes, it has a line under it, and that line is significant. That line means that an acceptable solution to my inequality could also be equal to that number. So the line underneath means equal to. I want you to write that, equal to. Okay, that line underneath means equal to. So now let's go through and read our key words. All right, in the first column, less than and fewer than, that's pretty self-explanatory. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you agree? So if I say a number has to be less than or fewer than, it needs to be closed off towards the x. If I say it needs to be greater than or more than, that means it needs to be opened up towards the x. Simple enough. Now, the kind of confusing ones come into play down here. At most and at least, and no more than, and no less than, okay? So let's think about this in terms of like a real life scenario, okay? Um, if I said kids can be at most 12 years old to eat free, at most 12 years old to eat free, what does that mean about the ages that would actually meet that criteria, okay? So what age would they be able to eat free? If I said they can, they can be at most 12 years old to eat free, what ages would be acceptable, Jack? Colin? 12 and under. Okay, 12 and under, so give me an age. Give me an age. Eight. Eight. Give me another age, Hadley. Ten. Ten, okay. So what is true is that all those numbers are less than or equal to my baseline number of 12, okay? So we'll see that more in a minute. But as soon as we start applying these real life scenarios to these keywords and phrases, it makes it a little easier. All right, let me give you one for at least. What if I said, um, you must be at least 18 years old to vote? What does that mean has to be true about all of the acceptable ages, Aiden? So give me an acceptable age. 30. 30, right? Okay. So what does that mean? That means that all my numbers, look up here, guys. All my ages, if I said have to be at least 18, that means that those ages must be greater than or equal to 18. Okay. So if I can learn what these phrases mean, I know what symbol I need to use. All right. So here we go with some more real world inequalities. Okay, it says at least three students from our school are in a chess tournament. So what does that mean is true? Teacher, sorry for the late start. Okay, so it says at least three students from our school are in a chess tournament. So what does that mean about how these values compare? If I said there needs to be at least three students, what would be the acceptable answers? Would they need to be greater than three or less than three? And you can look at your key words. As soon as you have it memorized, you know what to compare X to. All right, Hadley? Um, there needs to be at least three or more. Uh-huh, so it's greater than. So the acceptable number of students has to be greater than or equal to three because three would meet the criteria. At least means greater than or equal to, okay? Guys, you've got to get this. If at least means greater than or equal to, that's what faces my variable, okay, is the greater than or equal to symbol. 
All right, so five students, would that meet the criteria? Yes. If I plugged in a five for X, would that make it true? Yes, yes, it would, okay? So your ring size is less than seven and a half. All right, so we could use R for ring size. You could have used X, you can use any variable you want. R for ring size, and how does the ring size compare to seven and a half? Less than. It needs to be less than. The ring size needs to be less than seven and a half. Give me a size less than seven and a half. They go by seven, halves. Five, seven, 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 six, five. five. Okay. Very good. Would eight make it true? No. No. Okay. Now let's look at the next one. The temperature is no more than negative one degrees Fahrenheit. So again, temperature, how does it compare with my baseline value? Negative one degrees Fahrenheit, if it can be no more than negative one degrees Fahrenheit. You can look back to your code, at least for now, to give you a hint, but think about it this way. If I told you um, that kids can be no more than, uh, or we'll say teenage, no, preteens, anyway. Uh, they can be no more than, um, well, what was that example we did earlier, the, the kids meal one? Okay, you can be no more than 12 years old to eat free that means that all those values have to be less than or equal to. And that's what I know about that phrase. That means my values have to be less than or equal to. It can't exceed that value. It can't be more than. All right. How are we doing on these symbols? We doing okay? All right. Now listen, it's a new concept. I think it's a fairly new concept for you guys. So you don't have to have it perfect on day one. But we're just learning Basically, like we said, the foundations, the fundamentals of inequalities. All right, so that's my real world scenarios. Now let's try to get these inequality sentences into inequality um, actual expressions. Now, here's what's important. The inequality symbol replaces the equal sign. There is no equal sign in these problems. All right, the inequality sign takes its place. All right, so it says a number x, so it tells me what variable to use, plus 5 is less than or equal to negative 7. So I would write that. x, what does plus mean? Add. Add. <laughs> okay, 5. This one kind of spells it out for me, doesn't it? Is less than or equal to. That means the less than or equal to has to face x. Negative 7. Okay, now let's look at the next one. A number, again, it tells me what variable to use, x, is at least negative 10. So I need to know what inequality symbol stands for at least, so I know what needs to be facing towards x. What does at least mean? Remember? Yes. If I said you have to be at least 18 years old to vote, what has to be true about all the ages that meet the requirements? They have to be more than, right? At least 18 means 18 is the bottom, and every other value has to be greater than. But can you be that number? Yes. So in this case, it would be x is greater than or equal to negative 10. Greater than or equal to negative 10. All right. How are we doing on this, guys? All right, so when we learn our words, when we learn those key words and what um, symbol it stands for, it becomes a little easier. But if we try to just purely memorize them, we could easily get them confused. So if we understand what they mean, then it's easier to keep them straight. All right, twice a number. How can I write that, twice a number? Johnny? 2y. Okay, she said y because y is the variable. So 2y... Okay, it says is more than. So what symbol needs to face the Y? What symbol should face the Y? No, it just says, no, it just says more than. So it's just going to be a greater than symbol. There's no equal to. It just says more than, okay? Negative 5 over 2. Negative 5 over 2. So I'm not going to be asked, and on your homework tonight, you will not have to solve these. We're not solving them yet. All you're doing is writing them and learning the language. 
In example two, I'm testing solutions. All right, so what we've talked about with inequalities is that there are multiple values that can make them true. Just like when I just asked you for some of your examples for acceptable ring sizes. Was there more than one ring size that would make that true? Yes, okay, there are a lot. Actually, you could argue there are infinite solutions to inequalities. So all we're doing in this example, and you have a couple homework problems like this, is we're taking the value it gives us, and we're just plugging it in for the variable, and we're testing to see if it makes the inequality true. All right? So I need you to understand what we're actually doing here. We're just comparing values. Do, does that value, when I simplify it, does it make it true? Well, let's see. Negative 2 minus 5 is greater than or equal to negative 6. What's negative 2 minus 5? Negative 7. Negative 7. All right, think. Think for a second because these negatives can really mess you up sometimes. Negative 7 is greater than negative 6. Is that true? Because the farther away you get from zero, the smaller the value, this is not true. But you cannot just say yes or no, oh, Miss Kinder, I did it in my head, okay? I need to see the evidence that you simplified it, and then that's how you came up with your answer. If all you say is yes or no, as much as I want to believe that you knew what you were doing, I can't see that. Okay, so that's why I need to see you simplifying both sides. I need a substitution, and I need you to simplify it. Okay, so the same thing goes for the next one. I'm going to take the same value, negative 2, and I'm going to plug it in over here for y. Okay, so does that mean that it's negative 5.5 minus 2? E um, not equals, but is less than 14. Is that what that means? No. What operation should be connecting them? Multiplication. Multiplication. Okay. So five and a half times two. Now, calculators are open game in this chapter, but you don't need them. You could do five times two is what? What's five times two? Ten. What's one half times two? One. 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 Okay, so then you can combine them. What's 10 plus 1? 11, right? Okay, so again, you can use your calculators to verify, but you can also just uh, multiply them. All right, so here's the question. Is this true? Yes. Is this true? Yes. yes. So you would say yes. All right. Let's say you missed that a negative times a negative is a positive, and you said negative 11 is less than 14. Is that also true? Yes. But is your answer completely correct? No. no. So if you just happen to do the math wrong, but then it doesn't change the answer and you still get the answer right, it's still not completely correct. So you could still lose points here, okay? So what I'm looking for isn't just the yes or no. I also am looking for, did you get your numbers correctly and simplified? Okay? All right, how are we doing through two examples? Doing okay? You've got a section like this on your homework. Okay, so now we have two slides left, um, and it deals with graphing inequalities. Okay? So this is really important. All right, I kind of snuck it in there. I said need to know, but we, we're going to highlight it because this is very important with graphing inequalities. An open dot, that's what that open circle is, means that there is only a less than or greater than comparison. A closed dot means it has the equal to bar. So what does that mean on a graph? On a graph, that means that the number I'm comparing is a part of the solution, okay? All right, it means it's a part of the solution. Going back to my voting example, you must be at least, at least 18 years old to vote. Can you be 18? Yes. 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 So at least means greater than or equal to on your chart, does it not? 
At least, doesn't it mean greater than or equal to? So that word at least means the number I'm comparing can be a part of the solution. Okay. All right. So here we go. A rock climber sleeping bag is recommended for temperatures no less than, okay, be careful on this, negative 15 degrees Celsius. Write and graph an inequality that represents this scenario. So on a quiz or a test, I can give you a scenario and ask you to write an inequality. Okay, what does that mean? That means compare possible values. All right, so um, sleeping bag. Okay, sleeping bag is recommended. And I'm comparing it to this negative 15 degrees Celsius, right? Is it saying that the temperatures need to be what? It says for temperatures no less than. Temperatures no less than negative 15 degrees Celsius. So what am I looking for? Sleeping bag. When should I use a sleeping bag? When they're greater than negative 15? Or when the temperatures are less than negative 15? Hadley? I think it needs to be like the minimum is 15. Very good. So that means those temperatures, this is what no less than means. It means it can't go below negative 15. So all the temperatures have to be greater than or equal to negative 15. Look at your chart. Look back to your chart. Do you see no less than in your chart? No. Okay. Isn't it under the greater than or equal to column? So that's what it means. I'm comparing my variable with greater than or equal to when I see no less than. So if I should use my sleeping bag if it's greater than or equal to negative 15, what do you think I should be doing if the temperature drops below negative 15 degrees? Stop using it. What should you be doing? Should you be rock climbing? No, you're going to get hypothermia, okay? You should be inside, staying warm. Okay, so here's, here's the actual point of the example, okay? We are now going to take a solution. Take a value that we're comparing, and we're going to put it on a number line to represent our possible solutions. The middle number is not always zero. The middle number is the number, the value that we are comparing. Negative 15 in this case. Okay? And now, I need to understand how a number line works. I need a, a value that is one unit less Think less, this is negative, than negative 15. What is one unit less than negative 15? Aaliyah. Okay, but just one, just go one. So negative 15 goes to negative 16, very good. So she was right in her first answer, but we're just going to go one. Now what's one unit above negative 15? Just tell me. Negative 14. You must have three numbers on your number line, Okay. Now, going back to the open dot, close dot, okay? Remember, the equal to bar tells me if it's open or closed dot, okay? So, the closed dot means that it's a part of the solution and there's equal to. So, this needs to be a closed dot, okay? That's a closed dot. And then... Now I look at the direction of the symbol. If I'm saying S has to be greater than, what it means is that all of my solutions that will make the inequality true must be greater than or equal to negative 15. Give me a number greater than negative 15. One. One, negative eight. Those numbers are all to the right of negative 15. Okay, so what I'm showing with my arrow is Negative 15 is the cutoff. It can be part of the answer. And then all the numbers to the right would also be true. Do you see that? I'm showing on a number line the possible solutions to my inequality. All right, so here's another scenario of how it could look. Just a straight, here's your solution. R is less than or equal to negative 9. What does this mean? The values that will make my inequality true have to be what? Less than or equal to negative 9. I'm going to show that on a number line. 
Okay, let's see, Hope, what did I say? What uh, number needs to go in the middle? Like on this problem, what number would go in the middle? Very good. So that's how I know where to start. You don't just sit there and think, oh, well, I feel like I'm putting a 12 in the middle. No, it's whatever number is being compared, okay? You could call it your benchmark value. Negative 9, okay? What number would be one unit less than negative 9, Matthew? Negative 10. Negative 10. What number is one unit more, Kalani? Uh, negative 8. Negative 8. Okay, here's my question. Is this going to be an open dot open. or a closed dot? What do you think? What tells you? Yes. Does it have the line underneath, which means equal to? If it's equal to, that means negative 9 is a part of the solution. So it's closed in, showing that negative 9 can be a part of the solution. All right, and now to figure out if it needs to go, the arrow goes left or right, I come back up here and I read it compared to the variable. R is less than or equal to. So all of the values to make this true have to be less than nine. So I draw my arrow to the left showing the values less than nine, okay? And again, I take any value over here to the left of negative 9, and I plug it in, and it makes the inequality true. That's what I'm saying. Okay? Negative 20 is less than negative 9. All right? Okay, last one. Everybody do it on your own. I'm going to just walk around and check your notes and see how you guys are doing. Compare your answers with your neighbor when you have the answer, and uh, we will wrap it up. All right, so number line. What number goes in the middle? Five. What number goes to the left? Four. Four. What about to the right? Six. Open or closed dot? Open. It is open because there's no equal to, which means five will not make it true. Do you hear me? Five is not greater than five. Go ahead. Okay. Now, which way does my arrow go? Towards the six. Towards the six to the right. Okay. It goes to the right, showing that all numbers greater than five would make my inequality true. Give me a number more than five. Seven, ten, twenty, two million three hundred thousand. Okay, um, that arrow to the right is showing all the solutions possible. Okay, and that's everything you need to know for four point four.